Hey friends, I'm Paul, and you're watching Circular Motion. Hey friends, welcome back. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button down below. That would mean a lot, it would help me out an awful amount. And if you like what you see, hit the like button and don't forget to tickle the old notification bell. And if you're coming back for more, bless you, I love you, I will have your children. Only joking, uh, I don't have a uterus. But uh, yeah, I'm a bit uh, a bit bedraggled today. Our face is all sore from walking the dogs. At, because I get up every day at like about five o'clock and take the dogs out. And it's been quite challenging weather lately, so my face has got a bit chapped. So that's why I look odd. And my voice is a bit hoarse, you may be able to tell, because I attended for the first time since July 2019, I think it was July 14th, uh, a live music event. And the last one that I went to was Kiss on their uh, Never Ending End of the Road tour. And that was up at Newcastle with my brother from another mother, Justin. And uh, last night was the inimitable Roger Taylor from Queen up at uh, the O2 Academy in Newcastle. Again with my brother from another mother. And it was really cool. And he played an absolutely blinding set. He came on stage for an hour and 45 minutes. And at 72 years old, you know, he, he did a bang up job. And then we kind of hung around the backstage afterwards and you know, we were this close to it. And it was a huge fanboy moment for me. But anyway, you don't want to hear about that. So yeah, uh, I do have Roger's new album, but I haven't got it on LP yet. So I'm waiting to, for that to arrive. That'll come sometime in the next week. And we'll have a look at it then. Uh, I did only get it on CD because his last album was crap. No offense, Roger, if you ever actually watched this. Um, it was just... It was called Fun on Earth and it just wasn't fun on Earth. It was more like self-harm on Earth. But hey ho. But this one's a much, much better, uh, much better album. Uh, but again, we'll talk about it at a later date. So uh, what have I been doing? I've been listening to records again and I'm just going through some of my recent acquires, some of the, the stuff that I've, I've purchased but not shared with you yet. I've still got quite a few to get through. And as I said, I think last week or the week before, I'm trying to do it in bite size rather than doing a 30 minute video, a 30 minute epic. I'm trying to do it around sort of the 10, 15 minute mark just to keep it a little bit more, you know, watcher friendly. Because I've realized that unless it's something that's really gripping, which I know I am not, I won't watch anything for more than seven or eight to 12 minutes, possibly max. Um, so yeah. I'll crack on without much further ado. So uh, these are all from the now defunct record shed. Uh, he's moved to Durham now, so I'm going to try and get up there when I get some money. I'm a little bit skint at the moment. I saw Roger Taylor last night. I've seen him again on Tuesday, and then I'm taking my um, youngest daughter down to Manchester to see Youngblood of all people. So I'm looking forward to to both of those gigs, uh, and I will probably talk about them in my next video. But anyway. Without further ado, so first up is uh, it's the third copy of this album that I've got. I've got this is a an original nineteen eighty five um, pressing, another Robert Ludwig master disc. It's got that on the uh, on the dead space. And why did I buy it again? A, it was only a tenner. B, it's in perfect condition. And C, unlike my other nineteen eighty five pressing it doesn't have a massive warp in it because that kind of goes like that or like that depending on which way you play it which side you're playing so yeah um i thought yeah i'm gonna get that because it is really really good it's a really good sounding album it, you know it, it this i don't know it it just leaps out and just tickles your innards and just everything sounds perfect the drums sound perfect the guitars bass even Mr. Gordon Sumner himself, so yeah, he sounds, you know, he sounds all right too, Sting. Um, and I, you know, I've also got the anniversary edition that came out just recently, the Miles Shower, is it? I think it's his remix, which I never thought you'd be able to improve on a, on a Robert Ludwig pressing, but yeah, it, it just has the edge a little bit. And Sting does sadly sound like he's singing in your living room, which is one of the, the big drawbacks. But other than that, it's a great, great sounding album. So if you can get hold of the double album, the 45 RPM Half Speed Mastered one, I would thoroughly recommend it if you can't and you're looking for a copy I can supply you one with a bit of a warp in it it doesn't affect the sound I just don't like 
seeing the arm, the tone arm going up and down when it's going round. So yeah, waffling. I'll put that on that side so I know what I'm doing. So next, got a couple of Iggy Pop. So yeah, I'm not a massive Iggy Pop fan. I like some of the stuff he's done. I like, I've got I think two other albums. I've got Lust for Life, which is cracking. It does, I mean, it sounds fantastic and it's got some really cool tunes on. And I've got that bootleg that I think I shared with you. It's like a live album with uh, um, Bowie's playing on a few tracks, he's playing piano. Um, but I saw these, they were a fiver each. So I thought, yeah, I'll get them. And they're quite notable because of the guest artists on them. So this one, Instinct, this was released in 1988 and it was his eighth studio album and it's quite sort of rocky. It's got quite a quite a, a, a rocky sort of feel to it, a little bit more so than, than his usual stuff and that's probably because it features the legendary Steve Jones. Um, I like Jonesy. Um, I'm pleased that he won his recent court case against uh, Johnny Rotten and to be fair, you know, Johnny Rotten said, I don't want to dilute the brand. I don't want them using these songs in a documentary, like docudrama about the Sex Pistols. But then I turn on Ted Lasso on Apple TV and there's God Save the Queen playing. So, and he has to okay everything. So really he has no moral high ground. And also don't forget he advertised country life here in the UK, which is butter. So yeah, get back in your lane, John. Anyway, this album is out of the two, the better, um, strangely. It, uh, it's got some nice decent tracks on it, you know, um, there's nothing that, that stands out, it's never going to, you know, drive you insane. I think Kerrang um, said it was, it was in their 60th heavy metal albums for that year. So it was out of the top 100, this, this rate was number 60, so that's not bad, considering it's not really like a metal album, but Jonesy does a decent job. Uh, and obviously Iggy Pop's Iggy Pop, it's a little bit more accessible than this one, Zombie Birdhouse. So yeah, Zombie Birdhouse, this is his sixth studio album, so this predates that one. Uh, and this was released in 1982. Uh, 1982. So this one is quite a challenging listen, in as much as it's dull, it just dull, it does nothing for me. You may be somebody out there going, oh my god, how can you say that about that? album it's one of the best albums he's ever done but I just think it's shit sorry and that is despite the fact it's got two cracking guest artists on it it's got Clem Burke who is a phenomenal drummer and Chris Stein uh, who's obviously uh, a decent bass player and both of them are just you know half of Blondie so one of the most iconic bands of the last 40 50 years you know I, I kind of grew up with Blondie you know they were through my formative years you know Debbie Harry was a Bought issue fantasy so this uh this album was quite you know it's quite disappointing to be honest i saw like because i was just looking through and i thought oh yeah so, you know, looks quite interesting five quid and i saw clem burke chris down on the back and thought oh yeah that's gonna be fantastic yeah it's not sadly um but yeah give it a listen don't take my word for it obviously all of these are on amazon music or apple music or spotify or whatever other streaming service you listen to so give them a give them a go Third one and final one of the second hand purchases is this bad boy. Now, my uh, Jesus, look at this day, yeah. My love of 80s hair metal and 80s heavy metal is well documented, uh, both on this channel and out there in the real world. And this is, I'm gonna, you know, say, full disclosure, one of my favourite albums of that time. Um, out of all the hair metal bands, these are the ones that were most miscast. And the way I hear it is that, or the way I read it somewhere, is that they wanted to be a much harder band, and thus the next album, Slave to the Grind, had a much like heavier sound to it. But the record company, because everything you know, like Poison, Kiss, um, all those pretty boy bands, Faster Pussycat, Guns and Roses, all looking you know quite feminine and all teased and like you know, boy bands, heavy metal bands. Uh, they wanted to kind of go down that route, so that's why we got this. I mean, this is a phenomenal album. It's a phenomenal debut album, and it's an album that, you know, on the second album, they lived up to that kind of promise, and then they went downhill quickly after Seb Back left. Um, but 
this album, Big Guns, Cracking, Sweet Little Sister, Cracking, Can't Stand the Heartache, Cracking, Piece of Me, 18 on Life, which is phenomenal. Rattlesnake Shakes, a bit of a filler, but it's decent. Youth Gone Wild is just immense. Here I Am is good. Making a Mess, again, filler, but it's decent filler. I Remember You is absolutely cracking, and there's a cracking version. And I'm not sure if it's Madeline Martin or Zoe Kravitz that sings it, but it was on the soundtrack to Californication, uh, the David Cobney um, dramedy, would you call it? And, you know, his daughter, played by Madeline Martin, she joins a band as a singer and it's called Queens of Dogtown and there's a couple of tracks that are on the on the soundtrack um, they did that and what else did they do it's on my mind they did a cheap trick song Surrender and a Warren Zevon one Don't Let Us Get Sick which is also a great cover actually for me it's better than the original I think it's a bit more of a tempo but anyway, this album is phenomenal and I paid a lot of money for this, all things considered to say it's a second-hand album. I paid 30 quid for it, but it is in perfect condition. You know, and again, I got this from the record shed and the guys never, ever ripped me off. Uh, and I am going to make the effort to get through to Durham to pick up some more um, records from, from his, his... Apparently, it's got quite a sizable store in Durham Market, so if you live up that area... Pop in uh, and tell him that uh, long haired Paul from Darlington says hello. I'm going to be coming to see him soon. So, yeah, great album. So, on to the new stuff now. Because uh, there is another record shop in town aside from HMV, and I don't go in there because everyone tells me it's really expensive and I'm not like going to go and get ripped off. So, uh, I go to HMV and get ripped off instead. No, I'm only, only joking. So I went in and I know the manager Claire quite well, you know, she's always got time for a, a quick chat when we go in, she's always got a smile and a cheery hello for us. And anyway, I went in and I was just having a look through the your releases and she sidled over to me and she said, yeah, we've got this in. There's only two copies in the store, it's limited edition, but it's beautiful. So she hands me this and it's part of the 100 years uh, of HMV celebration. So it's kind of limited edition. And it's, I don't know if you can kind of see that, but it's got this beautiful, swirly, smoky green vinyl pressing. And it is, I actually, I've not listened to much Motorhead over the years. I've only listened to like the first few albums. And they've kind of got quite a raw sort of sound to it. And they're all right, but they're not like, brilliant they've got a couple of good tracks on and then the rest of it starts to sort of sound the same this album blew my mind a it's heavy as hell it's kind of like motorhead's sonic version of raining blood because that album if you've ever heard that album it is just off the charts in terms of the sound of the guitars and everything and this is nothing short of that from a sound point of view uh, but it's got some great tracks on too. Civil War, Crazy Like a Fox. Listen to Your Heart is quite a a mental like departure. It's quite you listen to it. It's it's unreal. You got overnight sensation. So this was their twenty second, I think. Uh, no, their thirteenth online. It was nineteen ninety six. It was the 13th studio album. Uh, it was the only time I think you'll ever see Lemmy without his trademark um, mutton chops and everything, and his handlebar moustache. And obviously, it's pretty much a brand new lineup there. There's uh, Phil Campbell and the legendary Mickey D, uh, who's playing drums for the Scorpions now, I believe, and doing a bang up job. Um, so, yeah, this is brilliant, and it was 22 quid, which was a decent price as well, I thought. Um, so if you get a chance, check it out. I think this got like rave reviews when it came out in 1996. Everyone said, wow, you know, this is like really, really good. Surprisingly. And then finally, because I just am a sucker, I'm like a marketing man's dream. I came across this. So this was in the new releases bin when I was handed that. Uh, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizards, Butterfly 3000, which is their 18th studio LP. Now... I got Gumboot Soup and I really like that album. It's got like a really nice sound to it. It's kind of got this 60s psychedelic rock feel with a kind of 
twenties, two thousand and twenties or two thousand and teens, sense sort of like musical sensibility to it. Um, this is a bit unremarkable. From a sound point of view, it, it's it's quite lush. You know, there's, there's lots of layers to it. There's nice definition. Um, it's like quite a wide soundscape, but it's just a bit dull. And they've got like so it says on the front here: psychedelic, melodic, prismatic, butterfly. Certainly the sextet's most beautiful work yet. Every splash of paint is exactly where it's supposed to be. Every brushstroke is considered. King is riding on their yellow-bellied brown snake, catch some smoke and slither off to the foot of the rainbow to work on their next opus. Does Butterfly 3000 sound like a 50-year-old relic or 50 years ahead of its time? It doesn't matter. This is a good record that folks will listen to in 3000 years. However, you know like when you see a film poster or you look at the back of a book and it attributes these quotes to a publication or a human being. Nobody's attributed there, there's no credits there, so I think they've just written that themselves to try and get him to buy it. Not only that, they put it in this nice nifty, it was wrapped up in a, like a tight cellophane package, and it's in this nice nifty brown paper bag, and on the front here it says, red, blue, or yellow vinyl lucky dip, and that's what snared me. I thought, ooh, <laughs> ooh. so I went and bought it. Just in case you're wondering, so that's the that's the cover. It's a little sleeve. Uh, I mean, I, like, I do like the art direction. I kind of like the way that they messed around with the color correction there and and everything. And it's it is nice. Lots of use of butterflies, and it kind of got that old timey sort of sixties feel to it. Um, and it's red. It's a solid, like opaque red. So it's it's all right. Uh, but like I said, it sounds good. It just, for me, it just sounds like one album with the same track over and over again. Disappointingly, because, you know, I really do like uh, Gumboot Soup. Gumboot Soup. Try saying that when you're drunk. But anyway, yeah, that's that's uh, that's everything. So just a quick round up. Um, thank you for, you know, joining me and putting it in my feelings again. I, uh, I just want to give a few shout outs. Now, I watch a lot of vinyl community videos but i watch them on apple tv and the problem with that is you can't um i think you can like them but you can't comment on them um i've never really seen any facility to do that so i generally um it's when i'm on my laptop usually when i'm like putting these videos together or i have it open for work so i work from home as i think i've mentioned uh, and so sometimes i'll have a video playing while i'm while i'm working and i'll just leave a quick comment if i can or i'll reply leave a like, subscribe, like return, reciprocate uh, some subscriptions. So I just um, want to give a few shout outs to, to a few people. Um, top of the list is Mr. Harris Pilton. Uh, check out his channel, it's great. Uh, it's always entertaining, he gets some great records on there. Um, Dylan at Noble Records, obviously. Uh, Oddbox Hopper is another one that I watch sort of quite religiously and the inimitable, um, I can't remember his bloody surname. I'm not planet anyway. Michael Fra, Fra, I can't remember his surname. It escapes me. Um, I've got Mark Hesford, Rob Walker, who's absolutely brilliant. Uh, two, uh, two from the trunk, the um, flip side vinyl, John Kerwin, and Mama's Records uh, at the moment. There, there's some people that I've been watching quite religiously. Um, so yeah, if you if you get a chance. Please check those people out. Um, you know they they as equally passionate about about this great hobby that we've all got as as I am. And I hope you've enjoyed today. If you have, please hit the like button. Uh, if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to keep up to date with the content, don't forget to tickle the old notification button. And I shall be with you again very soon. Until then, take care. <laughs>